everyone! Welcome to my channel again for another video with another amazing person who accepted to take part in this video. And today we have Renee Violet. Yeah. Renee is amazing at many things such as cutout animation, animation painting, doing background and stuff. But today she's here to talk about cutout animation because cutout animation needs more love. So I will let you introduce yourself. All right. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Renee. I am a 2D animator at Mercury Filmworks. I'm also a part-time illustrator for the Knights of the Light Table. Uh, I'm kind of a jack of all trades where I do, like, I really like every aspect that comes with animation. I like drawing backgrounds. I like making the characters move. I like designing characters. I just I just love everything and I want to do all of it. But it's it's kind of difficult to to do that without like burning out, but it's it's fine. I'm I'm making it work. Okay, so it's the holiday season and I would like to know because it's very important. Do you have any favorite holiday dish? Like the one thing you only eat during the holidays? Um, well, my mom, she loves to cook. And um, she would make, like, a lot of desserts. It's not so much, like, she makes the usual uh, foods, like, and all that. But uh, my mom, most of the time, will make desserts, like uh, Nanaimo bars. You, you must know what that is. Cause oh, it's of a, course it's I do. It's so good. Absolutely. It's so good. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, like, I'm, I'm going straight for the desserts. <laughs> <laughs> nice and speaking of the holiday do you have any like holiday tradition going on well before covid times you know yeah. we would have a lot of family gatherings and uh what i'd do with my family is we'd play like back in the day we would play on uh like my french canadian side of the family <laughs> we would play on the wii and we used to play a lot of uh smooth moves like, do you know what that game is? It's like a Wario game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a name. very silly game. And, like, we would play, like, Wii Sports as well. Just, like, all kinds of, of silly games on that. Uh, back in those days on the Wii. Um, yeah, that was, that was a tradition for us to all play video games together. <laughs> <laughs> and what is that one holiday song you have to hear? Like... Because we always get annoyed of the holiday songs. But there's always this one that we're like, okay, I kind of like this one. <laughs> um, there's a few. Um, but I think what uh, we would do a lot when I was growing up was play Michael Bublé music. <laughs> I was going to say Michael Bublé. <laughs> He's the god <laughs> of Christmas. Everybody says Michael Bublé in these, <laughs> in these interviews. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... Okay, if I'm gonna give a different answer, I'm gonna no, say No, 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 like, no, it's okay. You can say Michael Bublé. I mean, he earned the title. He he won. He won <laughs> at Christmas. Um, but my my plan B is to go for for uh like uh, the Beatles song that's like da 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 da. You know? know. <gasps> we have the same favorite Christmas songs. Yeah. You know this one this one was in the little reindeer movie. Um how is it called? <laughs> it's called Rudolph. I'm stupid. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that old movie. Yeah. Uh, well, that's fun. That's fun. Music is fun. Mm -hmm. Speaking of music, do you play any instruments? Well, I, I used to like, I, I took some piano lessons when I was younger, but I was not dedicated enough to practice it all the time. So I kind of just dabbled here and there, but my weapon of choice when it comes to music is playing a kalimba. Um, <gasps> so cool. Yeah, so the kalimba is also known as like a African thumb piano, and it's a cute little sounding instrument. If you've ever watched Avatar, it's like the music that they play um it's like da, 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 da. that little that little song um yeah so I, I i bought that thing just because it's very cute sounding but it's so fun or, to play yeah it, it is very fun and it's like you got like a dozen notes to play and like you tune it nicely and... you can't go wrong <laughs> yeah it's so beautiful <laughs> It's my oh, favorite little cool. sound in the world. And uh, 2020 has been a, a heck of a year for many sure reasons. 
Yeah. Do you have exactly. one super cool positive thing that happened during that year? Because you know it cannot be all that bad. There has to be one thing. Um, the most positive thing that came out of 2020 is uh, in the month of like April, May, like in the springtime when it was like really getting to me that like okay I'm gonna have to stay inside for a really long time. <laughs> um, I decided to look into getting a pet possibly and like I talked to my roommate about it and we were like all right is this a like is this a thing we can do and like are we responsible do we have room in the apartment for it and I ended up getting some rats and <gasps> they are really oh really good little boys yeah they're so cute oh rats um, are amazing pets you're gonna have so much fun I mean they don't live mm -hmm. long but they're gonna give they you don't. one heck of a lifetime <laughs> Right? Yeah. And like, once you start, you cannot stop. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> With rats, because you can like, you love to be in, in, in big groups. So, uh, yeah, I I have two right now, but I have the feeling that the family will will increase in size one of these days. And I know, I know it's sad to say it like that, but I had a friend who loved rats, who had rats for years. And he always like got one every year because of their life expectancies yeah. that is not that high so then it was easier for the rats because there was also always somebody new so that they never got depressed oh but uh Aww. yeah 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 they all gave they all had amazing lives Aww. and yeah oh rats are so cool i envy they you. are they're so nice they're so like they they're very misunderstood pets like a lot of mm -hmm. people think that they're like so oh, gross and like a pest But they're not like that at all. They're such good little, good little boys. Hey, but earlier, like I see the the animatic rough thingy in yes. the corner, and I saw that you you really use it a lot to pose your puppet, and I'm really happy to see that because it is something that I tell my students all the time when we do cut out. It's like you can't just go blindly posing mm -hmm. your rig expecting it to be animated because this is yeah. like it's worse even worse than doing straight ahead animation. So I'm just I'm just happy to see that it's actually a thing. Like do you often rough out your animation before you do it or can you just like wing it with the rig? Well it depends on the scene. With the current show that I'm on, the animatic is very like fleshed out with its timing and And, like you pretty much just have to follow it exactly it depends on who the storyboard artist is but uh they'll have like really really rough drawings like like this one you see up here mm -hmm. or sometimes it'll be like really clean like i i prepped this scene up so that it looks a lot like how i i regularly work at the studio so i like made a really rough storyboard on the top over here i'm gonna turn off the link rig real quick that you can just not be flashed by that but it's just like three poses and he's like <laughs> that's just, cute like neutral position and then like oh hello like there's somebody looking at me and then he just waves uh, <laughs> i don't know if we'll get through all of those poses today but it's just something to work on something to play we, with <laughs> yeah while we hang out So if um, you're listening to this video and you want to get into Cut Out, remember that it's important to have a solid start, either from an animatic, like what I just said, or like if you don't have an animatic because you're practicing on your own, don't forget to rough out your poses first, because I don't know if you agree with me, it's always quicker to rough out something with a sketch than trying to pose your rig. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, it'll start off looking like really flat if you pose the rig. And, uh, but if, if the scene is like really, really, really simple, I, I won't need to do any kind of drawing. I'll just kind of like, oh yeah, like a take or reaction with like facials and stuff. You don't need to redraw, but if it's actions like movement, um, like running and jumping around, please people pull, uh, draw it first. <laughs> don't you just go yeah, blind. Yeah. It's super important. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh. I'm just going into this one, and like, you can see I have a turnaround that I've already built over here. And I just like, I copy pasted the pose, like the three quarter front pose from my turnaround. And I just placed it uh, at the beginning of my timeline so that I can work off of it. And you can see that I'm like making little changes to it. And it's, it's 
starting to look more and more like the like the storyboard as I go. It's a very slow process, but so so this yeah. is how you would approach a scene. So you get your storyboard, uh, well animatic, you put it in, then you have your turnaround laid out at the end, and you kind of use it like a <laughs> like a little store where you can get some small yeah. parts and just paste them <laughs> yeah. where you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, at the studio, I was gonna go into this later when we talk a bit more about Toon Boom, but we have something called the Master Controller, and it's basically just like, like you said, like a little store that has all the poses you kind of need to start off of, and um, you can just like shortcut your way to to like how it's supposed to look later. Even with the Master Controller, do you find yourself having the rotation at the end of the scene as well? Because I animate with master controller sometimes, but I still like to have my poses at the end that I can just copy and paste. Is it's, it a mix of I both? I use a bit of both. Yeah. Uh, when I work, um, because like sometimes like it is a bit of a bother to go to the master controller and like okay, time to go turn it on <laughs> and like ooh, set it up and like it's only new for this show that I'm currently on that I started using it. Well, it is a new technology, so. <laughs> it is. It is brand new. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, so, so what inspires you most when you create or when, and this is maybe not just for cutout, but like when you, you draw, when you animate, like what, what keeps you going? Because animation is really hard. Like we do this, it, sure it looks is. fun, but it's actually not always fun. <laughs> Sometimes it's very yeah. hard. So what's it's, your drive when you animate? I am, so we talked a little bit about music earlier, but mm -hmm. I am a lot more of a fan of music than I am of like a person who makes music. Uh, so I always, always have music playing while I'm working. And if I am in dire need of inspiration, I'll put some of my like favorite songs on or like favorite soundtracks from movies. My go-to is usually listening to, uh, to like movie soundtracks, like just uh, like instrumental stuff that doesn't necessarily have like lyrics in it to put like ideas in my head. It's just kind of suggested like the emotions you're supposed to be feeling and like it's very cinematic as well. So like that stuff just gets my brain feeling inspired and stuff. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah. And what what got you actually into animation? Because it's fun. We always have these different stories about why, like, or how we fell into that universe of like animating and stuff. Yeah. Like, when did you sell your soul away? Yeah. Like, what brought you to do that? Um, when I was like a a tween, like uh, around like twelve, thirteen, I thought I wanted to go into movie production, mm -hmm. like shooting movies and stuff and like I'd, I'd record my own little videos on my home computer and, and uh do all that kind of stuff um but i was also an artist and like drew all the time and loved uh doodling like constantly during my classes and all that and the best way to like merge those two passions that i had uh, was to go into animation. But when it came time for me to decide, like, what to do, I was in high school, and I had a very, very inspiring art teacher, and she told me that she went into fine arts to go study to be a teacher, because that's kind of what her parents wanted her to, and it wasn't necessarily what she wanted to do. She actually really wanted to go into animation, and she kind of just encouraged me, like, hey, don't do what people are telling you to do, uh, just go into what, like, you know you love and go into animation. And, like, I, she, she knew that that was, that was really what I, I loved. And I was always talking about it in class and, like, made references to it in my, in my artwork. And, like, always was making fan art and was just a passionate little, little teenager. So she convinced me to go into animation and, uh, and then I studied animation and here I am. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I love hearing yeah. these little stories because it's never the same. Mm -hmm. Now for something a bit more practical. Currently in your job, you animate in cutout. So what are like the things that you like the most about animating in cutout? How does it make it easier to animate in that certain style? Well, it's really nice how your animation is already fully colored and fully like cleaned, kind of cleaned <laughs> up. Like the process is way different than it, it used to be. And it makes animating a lot more efficient. Obviously, computer does quite a bit of work, but it's all the animator making the computer do the work, mm -hmm. right? 
but I'd say that it's it's just really nice that like it gets done efficiently, especially in a team. So like you have people who are making the build and then people who are putting it into the scene and then people who are animating it. It's just a big team effort to make it all happen. It's really cool and magical to see how it's is a, like has evolved over the years and stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Hello, the formers. You are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I started out, the formers were not a thing. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Man. Well, like the envelope and yeah, no, the envelope just came out, and our teachers were like, yeah, don't use that. It's new. That was like Harmony Nine. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's come wow. a long way since two thousand uh, ten or eleven, I think. Yeah. Wow, that's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the most vital tool, like, uh, <laughs> for me is deformers. Like, yeah, it's it's super important because it, like, it really helps it make look hand drawn. Yeah, would you instead say? Instead of just like skewed. Because um, it's easy. Like, deformer rig are amazing, but it's also easy to be out of model. That's the word? Mm hmm. Yeah, so... Off-model. Yeah, yeah. off-model. Thank you. So, like, I think envelope... Do you consider them as, like, drawing substitution? So instead of redrawing something, you kind of rotate it, like, reshape it with the deformer. But do you use pegs most of the time to move your stuff around? Uh, I think that when I'm, like, just starting out the pose, I'll do a lot of uh, skewing and, like, transforming and, like, just using the whole peg to, like, move the upper half of the rig. You saw me just, just now uh, mm -hmm. tilt the head and stuff. So, like, I'll work really big initially and then kind of make my way smaller and smaller to, like, change micro little things. So, like, later I'm going to go into my pose again. This one that I just started, I'm going to go in and like adjust all the deformers and make sure that the lines are, are crisp and not doing any kind of tangents and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I approach it. That's really, really insightful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but this is the rig that you build to try and teach yourself rigging. Hmm. I was, yeah, I was just trying to teach myself how to rig because I just really wanted to animate Dune Link. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But when you're in a new series or a new show, how do you handle a new rig? Because I know sometimes you can have like documentation that tells you about it, or sometimes studios are going to have like a little masterclass about the rig. But let's say you're just handed out a new rig that nobody taught you how to use. How do you approach a new rig? Well, I look at the turnaround a lot. So at my new job, uh, or not my new job, on the new show that I'm on, <laughs> I. Uh, there's a lot of new characters that'll come in that like I've not I'm not yet familiar with and like I'll kind of have to learn the model of so I'll, I'll always keep their turnaround somewhere handy and I try and follow the board as best as I can as well to make sure that like you know it's it's looking kind of active and not just like perfectly the turnaround because it is tricky to find that that in that like that happy medium of it of it like yeah of it feeling like a new drawing, but it also being on model. So like a lot of the time when I'm handed over a new rig, I play it too safe to the like three quarter front that is provided in the turnaround. And my supervisor will often tell me like, hey, can you like give this a little bit more love? Like, can just... you break it please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just change it up so it doesn't feel like the turnaround. Like it's, it's too basic and stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And if it's more of a technical aspect, uh, how would you like get around a new rig that you don't know? <laughs> uh, well, I I just have to use it, you know, like get <laughs> familiar with it and like try and see like oh what are the the parts that I have because like some of the some some of the characters will be like completely different like shapes and stuff yeah uh, especially with like incidental characters so those are just like background characters that kind of just show up in one episode they will have <laughs> they will not have that many deformers i'll tell you that <laughs> they'll have just kind of like the basic like their their turnaround and you will have to do a lot of work to uh like make it look lively then do so, you redraw or do you create deformers yourself <laughs> uh i i think it depends on the show so mm -hmm. like on the show that i'm on i will often 
redraw parts and um, like add my own deformers. Okay. But when I was on when I was on Line Guard, they actually wanted you to uh, go and bug the build department so that they would build you a new hand or something. Nowadays, I never bug them for anything. I just make the parts myself. Kind of like how I'm doing right now. I I don't have a open mouth part for for Link, so I've just drawn a new one in that I'm gonna like clean up and make colored and all that stuff. So it's it works with his with his model and stuff. People who want to do cat out that are watching this, this is also super important. You don't need to have, even if your rig is clean, it doesn't need to be clean when you animate with it. So new mouth, new hands. I, I think all of these, you can keep them rough-ish until you're satisfied with your animation and then you can do clean them up. Because if you clean up a mouth and then you're like, nah, you know what, I'm not going to use it. You just wasted time cleaning up a mouth you're not going to use. So yeah. rough, man. Yeah. It's important. <laughs> yeah. Keep it keep it rough at the start and like don't get too caught up in, in details that could change later. Um, would you say that when you animate, you're more of an expression animator or like an action animator? I think if you were to ask me that like two years ago, I would have said like, oh yeah, I'm definitely an acting animator. Like I, I love drawing facial expressions and like mm -hmm. putting the emotion and all that stuff. But nowadays, because I'm on a, a completely different show than when I had first started, I think I prefer action scenes because there's a bit more room for error in those. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> like, because, like, the characters are, are probably, like, flip-flopping around in the scene constantly. And so, like, any time that they're off-model, you can, like, stretch and squash it so that, like... Or, or they're they're moving around a lot, so any any flaw is kind of hidden, especially if there's a camera move. <laughs> oh yeah, camera moves. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, I think nowadays I'm a lot more of a of an action kind of animator. That's interesting. It changes with the show, I guess. Yeah, because it's not the same style, it's not the same vibe. Yeah. Interesting. Speaking of uh, many shows, <laughs> what what was your favorite gig? you had uh, and why <laughs> well i have worked with like mercury as well as uh knights so i'm gonna say like my favorites from both because mm -hmm. i don't want to like <laughs> make anyone like think like oh she didn't mention us no it's not a competition um, <laughs> you can totally <laughs> talk about knights knights are amazing yeah uh but my favorite knights project was definitely starlight brigade because um, <laughs> that one, like, I am a huge fan of, of like, the game Grumps Overse and, like, NSP and Twerp as well. Like, so it, it really felt like fan art that I was making for them. And Didn't it was, you like, do, like, a, a fake um, cell painting of... I did, yeah, I did. And yeah, uh, I, saw that. I gifted I was that like, to Dan. So cool. Yeah, so that project, I was, like very very passionate about like the entire duration of like it was it was a real gift to be able to work on that one i feel like um and as far as my favorite mercury production mm -hmm. i really wish that i could talk about it <laughs> but it's it's the one show that i'm currently on that i like I can't and it's a secret speak too much of. <laughs> it is it is a secret um like, it is out there that the show is being made, but I'm not even sure if my studio is able to say that they are working on it currently. It's, it's fine. Like... I can take secret as an answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. It counts. <laughs> so speaking of uh, Mercury, because that's where you work currently, uh, what are some of the most useful tips you received from peers or mentors or like supervisor? Yeah, well, um, I've had a few different supervisors in the past and they've all taught me different things. There is one director, like animation director, who's provided some like tutorials and a lot of really great advice. She's even taught at our college before. Megan Ferguson, she uh, put up a tutorial on our server that I watched while working and her really great piece of advice that she gave was, uh, if you look at my timeline here, um, she said, like, before you work on a scene, uh, look at your animatic and, like, see the first pose and compare it, uh, let's just zoom into the animatic, see mm -hmm. the first pose 
and then look at the last pose and animate or not animate but pose out those scenes first okay so right now i'm posing the first uh the first shot or the first pose sorry mm -hmm. and then i went straight to the last one so i'm not working straight ahead at all i'm just like making sure that i hit my two checkpoints you know um and then as i work on this scene i'm gonna hit the pose in the middle of of those two so that's the like the one where you like stretched up over here you work your way to the middle of the scene and that's like a really great piece of advice because it ensures that you stay on model and uh it speeds things up later for when like you want to pose out that middle part so what i'll do later i'm not gonna do it like now but i'll, I'll just demonstrate is i'm gonna tween it right now it's, <laughs> it's doing that really cool thing <laughs> or it's like oh unfortunate looking but you are going to uh queen stuff later as you go and it it really helps uh make like pick up speed and and make the press process a lot more efficient sweet 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 that's a really good advice i've never heard it and it's really cool mm -hmm. put that in your tool belt i will so then what would be a good tip that you could give to people who want to get into cutout <laughs> um uh i have the perfect answer for this and it's just get familiar with the Toon Boom shortcuts. Um, and if if you need it, give yourself like your own shortcuts. I mm -hmm. pretty much stick just the standard Toon Boom, like what comes with the thing shortcuts. The only thing I have customized, I think, is uh, the deformer key. So I have it set to uh, turn on whenever I hit caps lock. So <laughs> a lot of the friends that I talk to during work that I'll like send messages to I'll <laughs> suddenly yell at like <laughs> because I have like my deformer turned on or something. So get familiar with shortcuts. And I think the most important shortcut I think I've ever learned was uh, the O key. Oh yeah, zoom on selection. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think I used it earlier, but like, let's say I have found a problem with, like, Link's hand or something, and, like, there's some, like, weird overlapping or whatever. I will click on his hand, and I'll hit O in the timeline, and it'll show me exactly where his hand is in the timeline. And, like, I can give it its own timing and whatnot. So, like, later in my animation, like, it's indicated in the animatic. He's gonna do some secondary animation with his hand. Uh, so later, I'm gonna go in and, like, just animate his arm moving independently. Um, and also that O shortcut works in uh, the node view as well. So you can go in and, like, find where his arm is exactly in there. Yeah. And you just have to remember that it's gonna keep the same zoom you had. So if you're far away and you press O, you're gonna yeah. stay far away. <laughs> you need to yeah, zoom in. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, he's so always cute. go back to, like, your... where you want to be like in the top peg pretty much yeah since you're a harmony user because i i kind of have i kind of cover harmony on my channel if you didn't know <laughs> um <laughs> since you're a harmony user what are three features that you cannot live without uh well we talked about it already but the deformers i love them to bits because they really help the drawings kind of like take shape and not just be perfectly skewed and all that stuff. It, it's super, super helpful. I really like the node view because it's like a different representation of what you're looking at. So like there's there's about like three different versions of what you can see in your in your animation. There's the the scene itself and then there's what it looks like in motion in the timeline. And then there's what the whole rig looks like as a chain, like how everything is linked together. And uh, yeah, because the seeing the rig like that is way easier to understand than if you go in your timeline. And I think if you press zero or nine, it's going to open all the layers and you're going to see there's going to be like a thousand layers down there. Yeah, yeah. It's like a nightmare to look at a rig just in its layers like that. It's it's scary. So like having it represented in a node view where you can like kind of have access to everything at once is really, really helpful. 
Um, <laughs> then it'll use your best friend. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's great. And like for anyone who's new to Harmony, they'll look at the node view and be like, whoa, what? that looks complicated. <laughs> and like, I was that person once, like not too long ago. I was just like, I don't think I'd ever be the kind of person who'd understand a node view. Meanwhile, here I am, and I'm saying, like, yep, the node view is awesome. Like, I know you're more into animation than, like, the nodes and stuff and compositing, but is there, like, a couple of nodes you couldn't live without? The cutter tool, I think. The cutter node, uh, yeah! It's the, it's the yeah. one node that no one can live without. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, it's, it's super helpful for, for, like, hiding things and, like... It, it works similarly to like Photoshop alpha stuff and it's it's great. I like it. Yay. Um, so in general, what's your favorite thing about that software? Like what do you and I, and I ask these questions because I've got lots of like uh, students and, and, and followers that are like, oh, it's too complicated. I'm too scared. I'm never going to learn it. But I actually think it's because I come from Flash and then I went to Harmony and I actually think it's worth it. So what's the thing you like most about it so far? Uh, the major part of what makes Toon Boom really great is that it's extremely versatile. Like you can do cutout animation like what I'm doing now, but you can also do something that looks like an anime, like like Starlight Brigade. Mm -hmm. Like Starlight Brigade was, was created in, in Toon Boom. And... Uh, I really like that about it, and um, the node view, like we were just talking about, it is <laughs> super helpful and like is a brilliant tool to just help with efficiency. That's also why I got into it. I was like, oh, I can do compositing and animation in the same software. Yeah, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. All right, so it's it, it is the holiday time. Time to give back to the lovely people watching this. Do you have any advice to give to? Uh, the viewers and not not just cut out advice but uh, like general advice like how do you keep motivated to do your work because like you said you do background painting a real like paint painting cut out animation you do so much stuff how do you keep motivated to do all that um well it's important to like stay inspired so a lot of what inspires me is like the music stuff but also like seeing what my friends are making and like following a lot of artists on Twitter and just seeing what they're able to make. Yeah, staying inspired is is really, really important. And not burning yourself out too is very important. So like, don't force yourself to make stuff when it's like, when you're not super in the mood for it. Um, and if ever like you're caught in a rough patch uh, where like you're just, feeling really lost and like not really knowing what you're doing uh because I, I run into that oh so often um, we all the do. best advice yeah yeah the best advice i kind of have for for like art block i guess is to um look back at your old work like look back at the stuff you were drawing when you were a little kid so like when I was younger, I so desperately wanted to draw Link all the time. <laughs> Didn't we all? <laughs> like, I just I just wanted to draw Zelda fan art nonstop. And uh, so, like, pretend you're having a conversation with that younger version of yourself. And tell them what you're doing now and show them, like, hey, you get to animate cartoons for a living. And just, like, see how that little kid version of you would react and, like they would probably think you're the coolest person ever, <laughs> right? So I think that's that's my best advice. I do work just... with kids in the summer. Usually I, I take some time off to go work in, in a summer camp to teach sailing. That reminded me because of your animation. So I, I teach <gasps> sailing there. And and, nice. and when you tell the kids that you're making cartoons, their face are just like, what? Yeah. You can do that? So, oh my God, what you just said just rings so much. Yeah, I've never heard that, but it's the best advice. And if I have an advice, like one good way to be able to look back at what you did is to try and get a sketchbook because this is where you're going to keep drawings instead of scattering them and losing them. So don't yeah. underestimate the power of having your drawings at one place and doodling. Yeah. And, and don't throw away your drawings, no. even if you like really hate them. Like last night I made a painting and I was not satisfied with it. 
but I'm not gonna paint over it. I'm gonna try and and like fix it. As Tiny best mistakes. I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have to like. Don't feel obligated to share the things you're not proud of. When you become an artist, there's no contract that obey that like makes you have to show everyone. But just keep it for yourself because later you can look at it and uh, just see how much you've improved since then. That is some good advice. And you also spoke about like keeping motivated and trying not to overwork yourself. Um, mm -hmm. What is something you like to do other than like animation? Because I know that I uh, like to not be in front of the computer all the time. I know that you paint uh, amazing mm -hmm. pictures of dogs <laughs> and other <laughs> animals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what, what, is there some things that you enjoy other than art or like just drawing all the time? Because I feel that's important and lots of students are getting lost nowadays because they just see our Instagrams and amazing artists and they kind of think that an artist have to do only art to succeed. But I'm pretty sure that most of us actually have other pastime to do oh, other yeah, than drawing. Definitely. Um, I like I'm a jack of all trades kind of thing where like I, I really like to do just a bit of everything. So uh, usually at this time of year in October, I mean, uh, wait, no, it's December. <laughs> pretend that it's that it's <laughs> December and I didn't say that but usually around Halloween time in October I would be uh like in my apartment lo like surrounded by Halloween costume prep uh I take Halloween super seriously like I I love making costumes and like completely transforming myself so uh this time last year I was making a full-blown armor costume uh like a, a dark souls knight armor and uh that like it uses my creative br like, brain like my artsy drawing brain um but it like it's a completely different medium where i'm like thinking in 3d and like cutting shapes out of foam and doing all that stuff so uh I, I, I'm also a big fan of video games, so like that being said, with the with the Dark Souls fan art armor thing, um, that's another huge pastime of mine. Um, but yeah, costumes, I love that. Oh, speaking of that, I forgot one you showed. I was like, ugh, I don't want to work on this, and actually, it was pretty fun. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's always something you can find that makes it fun, either the story or if the story is not good, maybe you can see if you're going to learn a lot about like drawing with the show. So maybe it's just important yep. to find something positive about the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can you can find something positive about about any anything like I I worked on Lion Guard and like I was not into that kind of media like to watch it anyway like it's definitely not a show that i would have watched maybe as a kid but like as an adult i'm just like not super into it but <laughs> it was really fun to animate like uh the singing scenes where where they're like you know uh doing their musical bit and like i usually am not a fan of musicals like at all <laughs> uh for the exception of like the the animated Mulan or like I'll make a man out of you scene that's like the only part where I'm like okay I, I love of course <laughs> <laughs> it's so good <laughs> um but acting for the like doing the acting of those scenes was was a really great time I loved doing those oh your animation is coming out so great I love the little expressions good job yeah I'm I'm surprised that it's actually coming together as I'm like talking your ear off <laughs> Um, is there some artist that you look up to that I could list below so that people, since it's the holiday time, they have nothing else better to do than to look them up and yeah. pour knowledge in their brains by staring at the pretty pictures? I wrote a list of names because if you had <laughs> asked me this, I would have just been like, oh, my mom. Like, <laughs> I would have just, <laughs> like, not been helpful with an answer. Um, I think... Let's see, because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
eight names over here. Um, so an artist that I always look at and admire their, their life drawing abilities is an artist named TB Choi. Um, she is Korean and I believe she teaches like life drawing classes specifically for, for animation. Um, I, I know that she has a lot of resources online about just like her, her sketching ability. And I believe she also does live streams. Uh, so look into her. Um, an artist that I've been following for a very, very, very long time since like my deviant art days is uh, a, a man of the name of Caleb Thomas, also known as CT Chrysler. I don't know if he still uses that. Uh, <laughs> deviant art uh, days. Yeah, the DeviantArt days. Uh, he also went as like DCTV, um, but he uh, he draws his original characters a lot and. There is something so special and important about about uh, OCs um, because they're that that they kind of awaken some sort of drive in you. Like mm -hmm. it's it's an actual child that you brought into the world. It is. And it has a name. It has a history. It's yeah, totally. And like, it's this is going back into like if I have art advice for people. My my second piece of art advice is never give up on your OCs because they are your 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 passion. They're like the fuel of your passion. Um, and CT Chrysler is a perfect example of that. Like he draws his original character all the time, and his it's important. Or it's it's really interesting to see how much that character of his has grown over the years. Um, it's almost kind of like a bit of a, a little piece of himself is that you get to see evolve and it's it's pure magic i believe uh man i'm, I'm gonna go through like <laughs> so many paragraphs of, of speaking about these artists um uh the next one is the creators of avatar um so that's brian Kanetsko. <laughs> Yeah, Brian Kanetsko and Michael Dante DiMartino. And they're both on um, Twitter. We can go stalk them and learn mm -hmm. from their yeah. wisdom. Uh, and it's a given why I'm I'm a fan of theirs, and it's because I'm a fan of their show. And uh, their show really inspired me. And they went through a lot of like meticulous world building that uh, I find really inspiring, and that I think. Uh, in aspiring animators and artists nowadays should look into like uh so that's why they're on that list and um, have, speaking of like these artists uh because i you talk about avatar and all i think is the beautiful art book i have sitting on my desk yeah um, you have do you have so any like, book suggestions that people could maybe rent to their library or look around to find or something little cool um, books at the Saved your butt sometime, or, or just fun reads. Mm. Uh, I have um, the Into the Spider Verse art book, excellent read, or just an excellent flip through, and uh, that's because um, with a lot of animated movies, it feels like the concept art looks way different than the art in the final result, like the final movie. Mm -hmm. Uh. And with Into the Spider-Verse, it really feels like they, they stayed true to the concept art and, like, really made it look, like, 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 painted, like, you know, in the final result. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good read. That's a good book to have. It was kind of hard for me to get, actually. Uh, it's kind of a rare one because it's, it's a very, uh, a lot of people want that one. <laughs> it's thought after. All right. Yeah. And... Do you have a gift to give to people watching this this Christmas, this holiday season? Because not everybody celebrates Christmas, but everybody loves to have a good chill time during December. So let's call it the holiday season. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, well, this little Toon Link rig that I am working on right now uh, will be fixed, hopefully. And like, <laughs> spiffed up and like made to be usable by the public. Um, this one, this rig here, is going to be offered to anyone who's interested what? For, to animate Toad Link. And uh, yeah, that's my that's my present to you all. 
Oh. Happy Christmas. Let's animate these shenanigans. Mm -hmm. And as a little final word, because as artists, we all tend to be a bit sensitive and we, we can get sad sometimes. Um, do you have any advice for artists going through like lack of motivations or like just feeling down a little bit? Because we're not professional, but sometimes just sharing what we do can maybe inspire or help others. Yeah. Um, well, dang, I, I already kind of said it, but yeah, like, that's let's true. Now that I, I think didn't about say it, it earlier. Um, don't you can skip it. Or I'll, I'll just say it again. Mm -hmm. And like, um, don't give up on your OCs is my biggest piece of advice uh, because they're that feel that you have inside you that like reminds you of like it's the do it for her kind of thing that's it's the, it's the simpsons meme of like do it for her uh so like i have my own original character and like a lot of other people who who do cartoons who are artists have their own ocs um just keep drawing that oc is my piece of advice one last thing to ask uh, to wrap it up when you animate in oh. cutout um so usually you would start uh, you you have your rough poses or your animatic that you can follow after that you would pose your first and last um you would make your first and last keyframes mm -hmm. and then start on your in between but you don't tween anything yet you're just doing um stop motion keyframes yeah well right now i've i've started to do some in betweening so like i'm i'm gonna be finding my keys now so i uh like the first pose is him just like his starting pose and then the next one is him uh kind of squishing like squashing his face he's gonna be blinking uh to contrast with the next pose over where he's gonna be really stressed uh, stretched up um and also I'm gonna like add a bit of an arc here, so it's gonna be like down. Um, but yeah, so this this process, I'd say that I'm ready for the keys now. Mm -hmm. And once all those keys are done, I will in between it and add all that timing and like uh, then offset some of the like the uh, drag. So like his hair is gonna drag this way and stuff because he like is pulling back and all that whatnot. And when it comes to in between uh, to tweening your keyframes um, with like the the motion keyframes, uh, how do you use that technology? Because I know you don't just go from one keyframe to the other and say tell the computer to animate it. Uh, like when I animate cutout, usually the the most freedom I'll give to my computer is like six frame or something. So how do you treat uh, the automatic tweening? Um, I do some shuffling around. So let's pretend that this is my keyframe and it doesn't look awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's just add like a really crappy squash, <laughs> a top peg squash, which you should never do. Um, so what I do is I'll, I'll hit the, like the tween button and I know that in my timing, I want for it to ease out of this pose. So I'll select a keyframe and you gotta click and drag this. and i i click and drag it yeah. closer <laughs> like that and then i'll i'll do the same thing over here i'll click and drag it closer and then i'll i'll get rid of that in between or the control k in between and i'll just drag everything so that it's we oh, yeah, and it made the same key. i'm so happy i was doing yeah. it right <laughs> yeah and then i will play back the animation and like there's some timing in there it's looking awful it's because... uh, it's looking kind of it's looking good for for what you were doing and talking at the same time so like the training yeah. is more of a thing to kind of find the pose you want and then you you kind of select it and click and drag it yeah pretty much yeah, yeah that's nice so yeah so you start from your first to end pose then you do your keyframes then after that like you just shown you gotta maybe do some um, tweening, like automatic tweening to find some good poses. Um, mm -hmm. And when you do that, to do your keyframes and poses, you always start from the outer uh, and then you go to the details. So you're going to start with like the top pegs and then you make your way down to the details. Because yeah. just like hand drawn, you don't want to waste time making these eyes pretty if the rest of the body is not working. 
Yep, yep, pretty much. Um, yeah, you, you work your way smaller is, is the main takeaway that I, that I have, uh, for, like, animating with a rig. Like, there's always, 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 always an ugly phase. Like, uh, right now, like, it, it's, it's looking still pretty rough, um, but you, you just s massage your way through it and, like, it'll, it'll, it'll come together eventually. Okay, so yeah, it's first and last pose, and like for this pose, you start on the outer, then you go to the detail, and usually uh, we're gonna start by moving only the pegs. Like you kind of try to get away with the most that you can by skewing and moving and rotating your pegs, and if you mm -hmm. can't achieve what you want, then you're gonna use the deformers. Yep. Yeah. Pretty that's much. That's good. That's good. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to sum it up or. Um, people watching this uh, so they can yeah. like remember it and just go animating right now yeah. <laughs> and then I guess you would do like uh, lip sync and hand draw uh, the, the the hands drawing substitutions and all the new drawings in the yeah end. yeah all that stuff kind of comes in later and uh, like if there's like really complicated shapes that'll come into like the hair I'll I'll like draw new hair <laughs> or <laughs> or like draw a new mouth or all that stuff this was super, super interesting, and I'm really, really happy that you accepted to come on my channel because one of my goals is to make all of these little roles and jobs a little bit more known because everybody knows what a what a like um, concept artist or like what maybe uh, rigging is as a in in the large, but nobody really knows how we do it or how we use the rigs or how we do stuff. So, thank you so much for sharing this. I'm pretty sure it's going to be useful to many people. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was nice to like talk your ear off <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with what I, I know. And I doubt this is going to be the last time because oh, yeah. there's so much stuff to talk about. <laughs> there is. There's so many things. All right, so um, I'm going to let you finish off with some final words if we ever forgot anything. And other than that, um, it'll be goodbye until next time. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoy this little cute tune link rig and make amazing little cartoons with him. <laughs> and I think we can find you on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And oh, yes. The links below. Yeah. Go follow me. <laughs> yes, go follow Renee. She's amazing. She's cool. She's nice. She makes amazing armor and D&D stuff. And she's just oh, nice. Yeah. So go follow now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So see you. Lovely people. And oh, until oh, next wait, time, wait, keep learning because we never stop. <laughs>